and at the end of the day they're just bags they're not people they're not animals they are just objects and they're not really that important in the grand scheme of things so don't feel too bad if you let go of a bag that you think you should have kept because there will always be another bag. Hey guys, welcome to my channel. I'm Jess. Just to let you know, it seems like YouTube is unsubscribing people from my channel. I don't know if it's a glitch or what. And some of you guys have mentioned sometimes you comment and then YouTube deletes it. Um, I don't know what's up with that, but um, I'm really sorry about the YouTube glitch. And if you have subscribed, just check that you are subscribed. It'd be great if you're subscribed so you can watch all my videos. Okay. So today I wanted to discuss reasons why people sell their bags and recently I've found myself selling my bags and it's for a, a few reasons but I wanted to go through a list today of why you might see other people selling their bags but firstly I wanted to share with you guys my bag of the day because I was getting really creative this morning and I thought it was too cute not to share so today I'm gonna wear my Fendi Spy in denim. This bag I think is from 2008 and I picked it up pre-loved. Uh, the inside is in Fendi Zucca but the outside is in denim. It was a pretty good deal but you can, this is actually the Baby Spy so you can pick up the Fendi Spy for really amazing deals because well it's a bit of a love or hate bag. It is to be honest one of the ugliest bags I've ever seen especially in like the troll leather. But I thought, you know, sometimes they do really cute variations and I am really experimenting with the, you know, stupid bag charm trend. So I bought this little, um, little key ring, which has this, sorry guys, I need to get my nails done, but I actually have been doing my nails myself, but I got a bit lazy. Anyways, this one has like a really cool uh, water glitter thing and then it also has little beads and I've just attached to it a Care Bear with rainbow and also extra glitter and then this is a Fendi AirPods case in crocodile leather. So yeah, that's my bag of the day. So I just had to share. Okay, onto the topic of today, why do people sell their bags? Well, I think we've seen a lot of people on YouTube, sometimes they, they make YouTube for many years and then they get over it decide maybe to sell their bags because their handbag phase is over. And I think a lot of us who have collector's tendencies go through phases, myself included, you know, at the moment I'm in my bag charms phase, so I'm going crazy with the bag charms. I do think there are people on YouTube who are like completely obsessed with handbags. And it reaches a point where they're just so sick of it, so they decide to sell their bags. So that's one of the reasons why you might see somebody who was really obsessed with bags decide to sell all their bags, because they're simply over the phase of bags, which I know a lot of you guys say that, you know, when you were younger, you loved bags, and now that you're over 50, 60, you still love bags. And there's definitely people who have lifelong obsessions with things, but there is that tendency as well with going crazy on, on something, there, there's going to reach a point where you get sick of it or you find interest in other things. So yeah, it could have been just a phase. Obvious one is they need the money. So these designer bags are bloody expensive. They're thousands of dollars and an easy way to get a few thousand dollars is to just sometimes simply sell a bag. So maybe you really want to go on a holiday last minute, but you're finding it hard to get the extra funds to go crazy on the holiday, you know, maybe book a nice hotel get nice flights, whatever, so you decide to sell a handbag to get that extra cash. These days, it is quite easy to cash in your bags. A lot of consignment stores offer buyout option. You will take quite a loss on your bag, though, if you choose the buyout option. I know that Fashion File as well do buyout option. I've never used them myself because I live in Australia, but yes, you, there is that option to cash in your bags for money. So a lot of people do look at these designer bags and think that it's just a waste of money sitting on your shelf. And I mean, if you find joy out of it, if you love collecting them, in my opinion, it's not a waste of money and they can sometimes go up in value, not always, but I wouldn't say they're a uh, very uh, reliable investment, but in any case, a lot of them do have value and it, not all bags, like for example, this Fendi Spy, I don't think I could cash this in for money. It's pretty worthless on, you know, if I'm thinking about money wise, but you know, something like a Birkin, you can definitely get some money from that a friend wants to buy a bag from you so I've had times where I've had like a friend who's really obsessed with my handbag and they tell me if you ever want to sell that I'll buy it from you and yeah I think that that can sometimes trigger this thought in your head to sell your bag because it's much easier to sell to a friend than to consign a bag or you know for example if I'm doing a vlog sale that is a little bit more complicated than selling in real life directly to my friend because I have to ship it overseas maybe and worry about I don't know if the money's going to 
go through and all that but whereas with a friend it's a lot much more of an easier transaction so you might have a bag that you're not that sure if you want to keep or sell and then as soon as someone shows interest in it who's close to you that might entice you to sell the bag moving country so i live in melbourne at the moment so it's a really cool climate but there was a point a few years ago when me and alex were thinking should we move to cairns because it would be such an easy life up there but I was like, you know, if I move to Cairns, I'm going to have to sell all my handbags because it is bloody hot up there and I don't know how my bags would deal with the humidity. Definitely, if you look at, you know, YouTubers like Jamie Chua, who lives in, I think she lives in Sing Singapore, she's had her whole wardrobe climatized with all the special uh, dehumidifiers and she has a full team looking after her handbags running the aircon all day but that can be quite costly to maintain and preserve your bags if you live in a hot climate even i know i keep bringing this up when i was in japan sometimes it gets quite hot in japan and i noticed a lot of the bags even in the louis vuitton window there was a bag that was quite warped so moving climate and moving to a different country with a hot climate may entice you to sell your whole bag collection or you need to opt for bags that can withstand the hot hot heat because yeah, I will say the good thing about living in Melbourne is that it is a good conditions to keep designer bags. As long as you don't bring them out in the rain, then yeah, it does get a bit cold and rainy down here. And it is really cold right now. That is why I'm always wearing my coats in my videos because I've had a few of you guys say like, Jess, it's kind of weird that you're wearing a coat and it's because I'm cold. And also I really like wearing jackets in general. The bag doesn't suit you anymore. Maybe you've changed style. I know when I was, you know, in my early 20s, I was going more with the trends of like music festivals or like more alternative fashion. I hate saying that, but I was just a different style, right? I was going more with that trends of that time. And as I've gotten older, maybe I'm more influenced by modern day trends. And so my bags have changed style. There was a period where I was more into like collecting specific uh, Louis Vuitton bags or specific Chanel bags. And then I lost interest in that. And yeah, I noticed that I dress a bit more casual and I would reach more for like my pico tin or you know my garden party now so i'm more into those casual bags as opposed to more evening style ba bags like i had a, a veru bag at one point it was a bit more evening or you know even chanel flaps i find a little bit more dressy so yeah i found that i'm quite a casual dresser and now i opt for more casual styles um maybe you don't wear your bags anymore a lot of people say they have bags which they never wear maybe they've only worn one time maybe they've had the bag for five years and they've only worn it a handful of times and some people feel quite guilty about keeping bags that they don't wear i do have a few bags that i don't wear as often i don't feel overly guilty about it but i will say if there is a bag that I don't wear very often and it's not my favorite bag, I will sell it because what's the point in keeping it? It is money that I could use towards something I would prefer much more or even just put towards something else in my life, like getting facials or something. <laughs> so yeah, sometimes you got to toss up. Is it worth keeping this bag? Do I love it that much even though I don't wear it? And sometimes it's good to sacrifice bags that you don't love as much. Uh, yeah, just to free up your collection a little bit maybe also you've sold you want to sell your bag because you you kind of made this idea up in your head about the bag before you were buying it you know like sometimes when you imagine buying a bag it just in your head it seems like the best bag ever sometimes you fantasize about buying a bag and then when you come to buy it it's not it doesn't end up being as practical or as useful as you imagined. Maybe it's too small. Maybe the style just doesn't suit you. Maybe you, it looked good on other people, but you don't love it on yourself. And that, that happens to me sometimes, you know, sometimes with specific colors that I love. Um, I might, might, like, for example, my Kelly 28 in Natural, I definitely hyped that bag up in my head because I saw so many people say that, you know, neutral colors are amazing. Caramel, it's such, like, an essential bag for your, like, kind of style for your wardrobe and a kelly 28 is so classic but when i like bought it i hardly ever wore it and i found that the style is not really my style in particular but i always felt guilty to sell it because so many people would say that's such a classic and beautiful bag but the brown just like wasn't really i know i'm wearing brown right now but that particular shade of brown is just like not too sure about it so 
that's why I decided to sell it. And sometimes you have this, like, you might be influenced by what other people say. You kind of build up this idea about a piece, but then it just doesn't work out for your life. So, yeah, that's why sometimes you might choose to sell a bag, even though it was once a dream bag in your head for yourself. Finally, maybe a reason why you, you decide to sell a bag is that it's not aging very well. So you might start to see a lot of wear and tear on the bag, and that might make you feel like you don't want to wear it anymore. I know sometimes when you get a bit of colour transfer on something or I don't know what something that happens to a bag, it makes you more protective over the bag because you don't want to destroy it. Some people when they see the wear and tear it actually makes them want to use the bag more and really enjoy it. I know when I start seeing wear and tear on some bags it makes me feel like okay now I can just enjoy it. But some people, they get freaked out by the wear and tear and it makes them want to sell the bag because they don't want to experience more wear and tear and it's quite stressful. So yeah, I would say there are people who buy designer bags and just want to keep them new forever and are very scared to put the wear into the bag. And as soon as that happens, like they get a little mark or scratch, it, it drives them insane. And I have met a lot of people who collect designer bags who have like a bit of OCD and they get really obsessed with like all the stitches and all that and if you're like that you most likely will not be one of those people who really wear their bags or really uh, put the stress into your bag you're very protective over it and as soon as something wrong happens to it you have to get rid of it because it gives you too much anxiety to think about it and I know that's a bit like why would you be like that with designer bags? But I mean, guys, everybody is different. Everyone has their own reasons for not buying designer bags and for letting them go as well. And I think it's just cool to appreciate each other's views on bags and collections. And I love seeing other people's journeys on YouTube as well and seeing how they change. I think it's quite cool actually to see people change and change their views on bags and change is something that we can't really help either so you kind of just have to accept you know you might like a bag today but maybe tomorrow you might change your view on it and at the end of the day they're just bags they're not people they're not animals they are just objects and they're not really that important in the grand scheme of things so don't feel too bad if you let go of a bag that you think you should have kept because there will always be another bag so anyways guys, uh, thanks for watching my video today, hope you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe and I'll talk to you guys on my next one, bye!